Yo. Why? Hello and welcome, everybody. <clears throat> Hope you got. Oh, don't mind that webcam. We got to reset the default, so uh, we're not going to have the webcam up for this video. Don't worry about that. We had a, P a blue screen crash, and I have to redo all the default faults because uh, I don't know what is up with uh, this. This is not normal. Anyway. So I just want to go ahead and update you guys with day two and three recap. Sorry for the enduring cry spam. GG needs to let us mute this. So we did in fact actually clear a tier 17 map that you can see from that footage. It's pretty awesome. Very tough fight. Um, overall, I will definitely say that like RF is capable of T17 clearing, but I don't really know if you want to clear the T17s in RF. I want to just kind of focus to build more on a map blaster. So with that being said, I'm going to go run a quick map, and then I'm going to go ahead and talk about what I've done with the character. Nothing is really different from the POB outside of just switching up a guard skill and using the new automation. Um, but we'll go ahead and jump right. Actually, it's more like the new and not really automation. It's, uh, what is it called? Call to arms. There we go. All right. So I'm currently on a new Atlas tree as well. Uh, I know people are going to want to follow this. I really recommend you do not follow this current Atlas tree. So remember, we have multiple Atlas trees. The first tree I played on was quite literally the, the League Start Atlas I had. If you look here, it's very, very similar to it, right? Then I pivoted into Atlas Tree 2, which was Harvest, which I then fell asleep and then woke up again and then didn't want to do Harvest anymore. And now I'm currently on basically a very end-game Harbinger Beyond-focused Atlas. Uh, you die a lot on this Atlas because the Beyond mobs are cracked that spawn, especially with all the League mechanic stuff going on. So this is a very, very tough Atlas, but it's also very fun. Uh, normally what I'm doing for this is basically doing like Harvey Scarab, Harvey Scarab of Regency, and then uh, also like Harvey Scarab of uh, this one. I don't really know if this one is worth running yet. So basically it would look something like this. I'm not gonna do this right now because this map's gonna take like 10 minutes to clear. And then I would also wanna Deli Orb my map, uh, but we're not gonna do that right now. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of go in with some basic Alc and go. Um, yeah, so let's see here. Plus, my, let's see, minus one modifier tier. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do 800% rarity here and here. And then, uh, yeah, that looks good. Right, so the change I was talking about, and this is mainly when you drop determination. Um, I am currently now running a pass one damage taken a mortal call. It's so level three and level one. I'm probably going to level them a little bit more. Remember, you don't want the cast one damage taken. Sorry, you don't want the skill that's being casted. So this would be the immortal call um, to be higher level than the cast one damage taken or they will not work. And then I just have call to arms and during cry. So that's just four sockets. That's it. I might drop that later, but right now it helps with staggering damage. Overall, I have to say I'm pretty happy with Righteous Fire Chieftain. I think it handles the new Atlas very well. I think that uh, as for the League mechanic stuff... Ooh, Scarab Dude. Uh, as for the League mechanic, I think it also handles it pretty well. Uh, I know a lot of people are having not as much fun right now with the League because of the natural enhanced force difficulty. It's not really affecting me too much, I'll be very honest. So, very lucky in that scenario. I'm just having a very tanky character. Now, a lot of people are going to ask right away, you know, how are you making your explodes so good? You really don't need to do anything. All you need to do if you're following the build guide is you see on my gloves here, I have fire uh, proliferation. Ignites you inflict spread to other enemies. That right there is the key. Don't worry about that fire exposure. That fire exposure is there because I didn't feel like spending more ickers, but it doesn't really do anything. So it's not important at all. Then other than that, the more mobs you shove in your map, the more explodes you're going to get, and that's pretty much where it ends.
This map here was not super juicy. You see the juicier content, you gotta come on the live stream. Because <laughs> uh, those maps are, uh, whoo! Let's just say yesterday I ran my first one of the juicers and uh, I had the first blue screen on my PC. That was uh, a sight to behold. I think we're done here, right? Yeah, okay. That's good. Okay, so let's talk about my gear, my skill tree, etc. I'm gonna kind of like burst fire and just go down and while I do that I'm gonna turn off this automation. Okay, so skill tree is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna just jot some information for you guys. Remember when you have a level 20 purity of fire, so right now my purity of fire is 21. When it's level 20, it gets 4 max res. By taking this node, this node, and 10% aura effect, you actually round that max res up. That max res is what allows you to hit the initial 90 max all res when you're wearing a Rise of the Phoenix. Now, if you get a 23 purity of fire, if you look at it, it says 4. This actually is now being rounded up to 5. So some cheap ways to get this is, for example, having a plus one amulet or a plus one weapon. That would make your purity of fire 22. And then if you have like uh, unveiled plus one AOE on gloves or helmet, that can get you a 23. Same thing with boots if you have them vault. Another uh, option is getting plus two AOE gems on shield before you pivot into the Fizz taken as. Now the reasoning for the 23 purity of fire is that allows you to drop this, right? Because I'm not running Determination anymore, remember to drop Determination, I recommend you get about 50-60% to 60 physical damage taken as X element, the higher the better. My source is currently, my body armor gives me 40, my helmet gives me 8, so that's 48. Then I also have Taste of Hate for another 12%, and then another source I have is also Sanctum of Thought via Armor and Energy Shield Mastery. 10% of physical damage from hits taken as Chaos. Do not ever take this unless you are Chaos capped. So, coming back down to here again, when you drop this section here, you actually get to pivot into a lot more damage. Main reason is Soul of Steel doesn't give damage, Bloodless does give damage, but not really, right? It's just a bit of life scaling. So I pivot from this into a Cluster Jewel like this. Now the primary purpose of this Cluster Jewel is just damage. So this has like Chaos Res, Dexterity, Smoking Remains as damage. There's so many decent 8 passive clusters you can use. I would say some of the stronger nodes on clusters would be Prismatic Heart because it's all res and Burning Bright because it's AoE. I don't have any Burning Brights right now. Over on my smalls or mediums here, you can see I've got two flows of life. It's my favorite medium node. Even just having a, like a single medium node without uh, like two notables, I think it's still worth it. Flow of life gives like a life node, increased damage and regen all at the same time. This is typically when I start dropping out of like this node, for example, uh, because you can get like just straight up better nodes here. And then I'm also pivoting into jewels, which can probably run between 40 chaos and a divine each. I'm basically looking for life with two damage mods. So life, fire, multi, area damage. Over here we have life, area damage, dot multi. Um, over here I have life, damage over time, multiplier, increase damage. Over here I have life, burning damage, dot multi. And then over here I have life, burning damage, fire, dot multi. Uh, these are all things you can kind of like slowly dip your currency into i would not go after jewels when your gear is still very poo poo so now let's talk about our gear so over here on my weapon i'm still using the same weapon i need to actually craft a new one it's basically dot multi burning and i crafted firing knight probably going to go with a fractured craft and then i can get a plus one which scales the fire trap a lot harder speaking of scaling the fire trap let's go ahead and look at our tooltip so righteous fire standing still is 490k and fire trap over here is 680k so over here, I've got a Call to Arms Enduring Cry setup with a level 1 Frost Blink. Remember, your two best things to craft in a weapon would be Fire Chance and Ignite, which you can find there, or Fire Damage Overtime Multiplier as a suffix. Uh, over here is my helmet. Basically, buy an item level 82 plus helmet because Essence of Horror is really expensive. Maybe cheaper now, I haven't looked. I opted out to Harvest Crafting this. It's about 5,000 average life force to get something similar without the life roll. So a Conk and Burn Helm, if you come here and do Reforge Fire, this is what I was talking about, where it's about 1 in, well, not 1 in 5,000, but it's about 5,000 life force to hit Conk Effect and Burning. A very decent helmet, gets you set up for a very long time. Example, I've cleared all four Void Stones and a T17 map with this helmet, right? Um, so here I've got Trap and Mine, Fire Trap, Swift Affliction, Life Tap. I recommend players first go for a level 21 Fire Trap. Quality is not a super big deal, but of course to each their own. Over here is my shield, Rise of the Phoenix. You guys know I'm a big fan of it to hit 90 max all res at the beginning. I've got Skitterbot, Purity of Fire, and Malevolence over here. 
Uh, over here is just an amulet. It's basically double decks, life, dot multi, and I crafted AoE area damage. Uh, ring for minimum frenzy. This probably needs to be replaced because I could just realistically run Blood Rage. So this is something I'm looking to replace. I'm not sure exactly with what yet. Maybe like when I get Annihilation's approach, I I'm not 100% sure, but this is definitely my weakest piece. Uh, over here is a piece that's okay. It's basically got Chaos Resistance. Um, it's got uh, <clears throat> some Life Regen. It's got some Int. Now that Int is not really very ideal. However, because I'm now at 214 Int, I'm considering going Reduced Effect of Shock Tattoos. So that Int is actually like 30% Reduced Effect of Shock, which actually looks pretty good. Um, over here on my gloves, I've got Life Tap, Faster Attacks, Momentum, and Shield Charge. Remember when you have Life Tap on your Righteous Fire? You want to use a low level life tap for your trigger skills like shield charge so every time you cast it one time you trigger the life tap buff for your righteous fire over here i've got life tap faster attacks momentum shield charge momentum being a not really very important over here i've just got a standard immortal flesh not really looking to upgrade this anytime soon and then down here i've got my boots my boots currently have like enduring cry cooldown rain movement speed i actually think i want action speed here i have to go look at them again but I've got my Punishment, Life Tap, Cast some Damage, Taken, Immortal Call. Speaking of which, I actually need to flip this Life Tap, so let me go ahead and do that. One thing nice about Life Tap after you flip it is you just keep it at level 1 and you put it where your shield charge is. And now your Life Tap lasts 8 seconds. So that's kind of cool. Uh, that's actually like pretty big quality of life. Other than that, as for my Flask, I'm running Taste of Hate for Fizz Taken As. I'm running a Quartz here with Gain 3 Charges, 3% Regen. You get that 3% regen via Katarina when you are doing Betrayal. Um, over here, I've got Reduced Effective Shock on a Granite with Gain 3 Charges. We've got Armor, Gain 3 Charges on a Quicksilver. And then I have a White Sulfur Flask just because it's kind of uh, here for the ride. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Uh, my Pantheon, I get this question so much. It's the exact same as the Guide. It's basically Brian King and Rolakesh. I do recommend you unlock that Reduced Effective Chill. It really does help a lot. So I actually need to go get that for myself. But that is pretty much about it. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Sorry if I sped through this. There's just a lot to go through. Um, feel free to check out the live streams at twitch.tv slash box. We're going to be upgrading the character until I can't upgrade it anymore pretty much. So that's pretty much about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys all tomorrow. Take care and thanks for watching.